I'll try. That kind of self-imposed jeopardy of giving myself a five-week uh, timescale to restore this thing would be brilliant for the channel. However, I don't think I can make that date for a couple of reasons. I'm moving house, I'm actually going away on that day on a road trip around the south of the UK, and realistically, with all that going on, I don't think I could do it in time. But I love the idea of taking it to a car show and I do love the idea of a bit of a time limit. So I've booked this show. Now get your pens and papers ready. I'm gonna put all the details up of this show and write them down. And it's important that you write them down if you're fairly local or if you fancy a little road trip. That would give me three months to get this car safe for the road so I can take it to this car show and reliable enough to get me there because it's a good hours round trip from here. And what I'd like to do is see some of you guys there. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I could bring some stickers, maybe a couple of caps and things, and you guys can have a lovely day out at the show and maybe come and say hello, which I'd really like. I'd like to meet some of you in person. Um, and you can hopefully see this thing in the flesh hopefully looking a bit better than it does now, you know? But yeah, that sounds good. Three months. I'd better get cracking then. But first, doesn't this look well? Gave this a good old uh, spit shine the other day. Made it look all swanky. After its hard few days work the other day. The Tower of Power, which we've got an amazing episode of coming soon. But yeah, doesn't she look well? And the reason I've given this a good old tidy up is she's up for sale. Oh no, the Porsche! It's up for sale. I need about five grand back, so if you want to buy it, come and buy it. It's a really, really good car. It's a very genuine, original, not messed about with car. 99,000 miles on the clock, top thing. The reason I'm selling it though, is because I need the money for this thing and I'm keeping this thing. So, and I've got loads of other cars. So yeah, there you go, it's up for sale. Now, let's get stuck into this thing and work out, well, what I'm gonna do today. I'll stick a link to the Porsche advert in the description if anybody wants to have a look. But today with this, what I'd really like to do, well, over the next couple of days, I think, is get this engine cleaned up, a few parts swapped on it, get the oil changed, have a good look over it, maybe refit some of the bits that we took off initially and try and fire her up and see if we can have a sort of nice, reliable running engine because we've got the ability to select a gear now. It'd be nice if the engine ran, and then we can look at sort of freeing the clutch and stuff. So that's, I think, the ambition of this episode. Get the engine running. Oh, and I'd like to maybe attach the throttle cable as well. Get the throttle working off the pedal instead of a bit of string. Right, let's get this clamshell off. Unfortunately, I haven't bought all my caving gear um, that I usually use to crawl in underneath the bonnet of this panard. So I do need to take this clamshell off again. I haven't developed a way of doing this on my own yet. Dickie's not here, he's gone away for a week. Fancy that. 
Um, so I need to do this on my own. Um, I feel that this is going to not go well. Snapping noises. Okay. Big strong man. Oh god. Oh it worked. I did it. Ah. Oh. That was easy. Uh Oh, nice. Just found my 10 mil spanner that I thought I'd lost. So before I get stuck into actually repairing anything, what I'd like to do is, I've got this big bit of cardboard here, look. Which I'm gonna slide under the car, and then I'm gonna to get to work with a degreaser and the brush just trying to clean everything off as best as I can, make it a bit easier to work on. Doesn't fit. Ah. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, right then. This may take a while and it's probably not gonna be very interesting. So, gloves, Time lapse, degreaser, music. where I get my tyres for two tyres for her car so I thought while she was going down there you know two hour round trip maybe I should give her these tyres and the guy can spend overnight changing them so we've then got four nice road legal tyres on the car that'd be a good start wouldn't it because I'm a little bit worried about the egg hatching on the other side and uh, exploding in my face so I'm going to get these off and we'll give it to the mother. These wheels haven't been off in like 45 years, so um, is this gonna do it? I hope so. 
easy. 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 Super easy. We learned last time as well that these aren't wheel bolts. This is the drum brake and then this is the wheel around the edge. What a fascinating car, isn't it? Uh, uh, God, I desperately need a new jack. Uh, please, if you're super rich, go to the link in the description and buy more stickers and hats. So you could just buy like 10 hats or 20 hats and that might get me halfway there to buying a new jack, which would be great, wouldn't it? Because this one's a bit old. Obviously didn't think of that, did they, when they designed the car? <laughs> it's just a, it's such a fantastic condition, I mean, lots of service to us, but... So impressive. Right, let's get something for that to sit on, so it doesn't smash to pieces. Marvellous. This one's held up surprisingly well, isn't it? Compared to the others on the car. Dunlop gold seal. Really nice. A little bit of a little bit of egging starting to happen there, but yeah, we probably could have got another 5,000 miles out of that. Oh well. So many parts of me want to just stick a pin in that and see what happens, but we might be reusing it, so better not. Things are really starting to come together here. So I'm just sort of like going around every bit and I'm removing what we don't need. Looking at potentially little jobs, like just replacing bits on there and just sort of making everything a bit nicer and cleaning things up as I go. You know, like looking at these wires and thinking, right, okay, they're obviously for something not particularly important. So these can be sort of tie wrapped away nicely and Again, new connections on a few bits and I'm getting rid of stuff like the old heater channels and all these seized cables everywhere that we don't need. And I'm looking at the brake pipes as well. And surprisingly, I mean, they look serviceable to me. They look usable, which is amazing. If I can get them to undo, because I don't know what funny sizes these are going to be. It'd be great if I didn't have to swap them and I had some original brake pipes with it, wouldn't it? Obviously the heart, the soft lines I'm going to have to change because they're, well, they always go, don't they? But really nice, starting to get there, but it is very time consuming, so. Part of this tidy up that I'm doing is also a great way of understanding exactly what's what on the car and what it does and working out, you know, wiring and all this sort of stuff. And making space to clean and so you don't have things like this lying around so i've just been starting to work wires out and i think i'm going to do a bit of rewiring on the car partly because we have this alternator wire here which is just you know flying around this other alternator wire here i think yeah um, and again, that goes, it's mad little route and it's far too long. And then you've got this start motor wire here, which is part of this loop, which I think probably used to go to that light on the front and maybe some other stuff that isn't there now. And the end of it's all knackered and the end of it over here and over here is all a bit knackered as well. 
So I think the thing to do is to get rid of all this that I don't need, redo these three wires, because there's only three wires I need to redo, make my own little loom with my own little bit of conduit all the way from there, underneath the battery tray and back up to here. Keeping everything nice and tidy, everything the right size it'd be, and just removing a lot of this stuff from all these hot bits, you know? So let's do that. I was taught at school how electricity works and how wiring works. And I still am pretty convinced it's magic because what is electricity and how does it go down the pipes? you know, to the bits where it needs to go. It's just, and how do you store it in the battery? It's insane, isn't it? Uh, first, I'm gonna need a touch of conduit. We'll use some of this that I used to drain some petrol with the other week. And that's just gonna sort of go roughly from there up to there, nice, simple, clean, out of the way. Now, let's get rid of some of this stuff that we aren't going to use um, and we'll reroute these better. Look at that thing there, not great. I mean, just getting rid of this one wire is going to make a huge difference, isn't it? Uh, right, okay, so... Uh, hmm, interesting. Let's try and unwrap this first. This is going to be tedious, isn't it? On the last video that we put out, there was a comment from a fella that's got one of these. Well, he hasn't got one of these, he's got PL17, which is a slightly later model. But it shares many of the same components. Now, he has offered me that donor car, and I have made contact with him. So I'm hoping in the next episode of the Panard Saga, we may be going to see this guy and having a look at what he's got. Um, and potentially dragging it back here and cutting a load of bits off it, you know? Because he says his floor pans are good, his sills are good. Hasn't got an engine or anything, that car. Um, but he might have a lot of bits that we can use, you know? So I'm excited. And he says he's got one of these gear linkages that isn't seized as well. So, I mean, that'd be ideal if we could replace it with an original one that works. Um, I'd be very excited to see that. When I'm doing stuff like this, I always think like about the Frenchman that was was winding these this bit of cloth tape together. You know, back in 1958 probably. Okay, so this is our first wire here, goes to the start motor. So let's just find our bit of, where did I put the conduit? Where did I put it? Is conduit the right word? Am I saying the right things? Let me know. I don't know. But seriously though, where have you fucking put it? I literally just, oh, it's there. Oh. So we'll put a little fixing on that and then that's this one done. Now these can all be, you know, capped really. What have we got? One, and by capped I mean just cut off. 
Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, this one will have to stay. He's good. So we can lose that there. And we can lose them there. And we can lose that one as well there. Look at all that mess we've just got rid of. Now I might be able to reduce this one a little bit further here, so we'll just get get that down. Can I just rip that? Oh yes, I can. Fantastic. Really look at that. Right, yes, yeah, so don't need that. What's this one? Don't need that either. So that's nice. That's just a single one now. We don't have to cap those ends off. That can stay there. So it is just these here. Now, I wonder how easy it would be to remove oh, these. I kind of like to keep these wires on because in case they are for something that I might want to fit at a later date or this could be a real nice source of some power if I want to put extra lights on it or something. I don't really want to break these out of this uh, case because usually what I do is just unclip them from the connector block but it doesn't look like a connector block I've ever seen before. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to put a little bit of heat shrink over each one and then what we'll do then is put a bigger bit of heat shrink over them all and they'll just go to a nice tidy little cap you know and that way it's going to stop them shorting together as well do you know what I mean Now using what I've got around me, which is my favourite thing to do, I'm just going to stuff all these into this little black thing here. And pop an industry standard cable tie. Just over the top there, keep them all together and that is a nice little cap. Doesn't need an awful lot of wires to run this car does it? We've not actually tested this properly yet so I might have to get a, another one of those or get this rebuilt or something but we'll have a look. Maybe it'll work after we've changed all these wires, who knows? But for now let's just get a little socket and get that off there. That's what we're up against. All this wiring has just been sort of thrown together on this car. So I want to just spend that extra little bit of time doing this now. I hate to say doing it properly, but making a slightly better job of it than the guy before. And then at least we stand half a chance, you know. Uh, let's get that thing off there. Doing it properly is such a awful thing to say really because one person's view of properly very different to another person's view of properly bollocks so <laughs> that's just snapped which is great 
I don't think it was up to much anyway. Um, right, how am I going to fix that on there then? Now it's all snapped and stuff. Hmm. Bollocks. Right, might have to drill that out, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, isn't it? Old bolts got a bit snappy. Hope that one doesn't as well. Let's just give it some more of this and hopefully it'll play ball. Um, but yeah, might have to drill that out. So I'm gonna do that now and then I'll tidy everything up and then you can have a look at it. Right, okay, let's have a look at this then. So this is a voiceover because everything for the next sort of 10 minutes or so didn't record properly, which is fun, isn't it? So I don't know what I'm actually saying here. Uh, lots of hand gestures, sort of like a MP or something. Look, you can see all my nice wiring there on the bottom right. Look, there's a conduit, goes into there, all the nice new fixings. That looks good, doesn't it? You see that nice little cap I did there as well. Look, oh, look, yeah, great. I remember saying that I didn't have the right terminals, the big circly ones that I wanted, but I've got those anyway, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, earth wire, that's good. What else am I saying? I don't know. There goes the finger, pointing. Pointing to that wheel arch, don't know why. Right, what's happening here? Um, look at that bonnet on the left hand side there, that's cool isn't it? Looks like it's eating the floor. Nice. Well, what was that look for then? So I don't know. Um, right, what's happening here? Yeah, so on this engine there is two heat shields on each side of the engine. They're my worst enemy at the moment and I've got rid of both of them. You can't do anything with the heat shields in place so I've decided to just get rid of them. I don't fancy driving this thing around the south of France you know for like 10 hours at a time so I don't think I'll particularly need those heat shields anyway. So they've been resigned to the bin and I'm just explaining how to get those heat shields off. You have to take an oil um, sort of uh, filler pipe uh not an oil filler pipe what's the word for it doing voiceovers is really hard an oil feed pipe that's what i'm saying i had to do the voiceovers for this like this because the audio when i moved the camera i pulled the bloody microphone thing out so the microphone didn't record any of what i was doing or what i was saying but i don't think it was very important anyway but yeah absolute ball lake here look trying to get this thing out poor bloke there Am I am I going to do it? Am I getting it out? I don't remember it being that hard. I'm making a bit of a meal out of that. Hey, there we go. Look at that horrible bloody thing there. I think that's what I'm saying there. I'm saying look at this horrible bloody thing. Right, just going to throw that in the bin. Ah, oh, right, yeah. This bit now. I'm undoing the brake cylinder because I need to take that off and sort of study it and try and find another one. And I think I'm saying at this point, look how good these brake pipes are. I can't believe I'm actually undoing them. And I couldn't believe I was actually undoing them. It was crazy to, you know, he's been sat in a barn for 45 years, not moving. And, and there I am just un unbolting them easier than I have done on some 10 year old cars. So that's impressive. Is this one going to move, though? Oh, yeah, look at that. Easy, easy. Bit more plus gas. Oh, I don't know what to say. That is probably really funny, though. Yeah, there we go, taking that off. Absolutely great stuff. What well, this is thrilling, isn't it? I'm enjoying watching this now. I don't know what I'm saying there. What well, what can I possibly be talking about? It's just a, how can I have so many words for just a brake pipe union? Just shut up and take it off. Right there it goes. Look at that. Oh, what a beautiful bit of kit. Looks like it probably still work, but it doesn't work. 
all the seals are gone. So I've got to try and find another one of those. And all the pedals and stuff and everything, they're all sea sold as well. So I'm going to have to... See that dust fall out there then? I'm going to uh, have to try and unseize all the pedals and sort all that stuff out. It's going to be an absolute bore late to do that. But anyway, that's off. Right, this bit here, I'm explaining to you that the... And I made a funny joke here. The throttle pedal isn't working because it's on that bar and i think i said something like that bar is now acting as a pan hard rod which is a funny joke because it's it's stuck on one end and it's open on the other so it is acting like a pan hard. it's in a pan hard um i thought it was funny anyway don't know what i'm saying there now um oh yeah i think i was gonna say right everything's getting tidied up gonna clean up it look i've screwed that thing back together as well um i'm gonna start getting the degreaser out, getting the wire brush out, getting all the drill out and stuff and just having a real good go over of everything there. Um, and cue the music.
I don't know, because, you know, when you do it, you, you're sort of like, you're seeing it throughout, so you don't know if it looks any different when it's done. But, it's now loads cleaner, everything's accessible, all the nuts and bolts and clips and, you know, all the fixings, if I need to get to anything, all nice and clean, everything's free, no oil, nothing. Lovely. I've given these things a good tidy up as well. There is some blue paint in there somewhere, so that's dead cool. I like it. It's a shame about the audio that I've only just realised that wasn't there for those bits, but I'm hoping voiceover Ben can sort that. Um, yeah, it's all good. First job of the day is to get under there and get this oil draining and then tidy everything else up while it's draining. Ah, for this, I'm going to need a wire brush. Yeah. I think there's a magnet on this and the good news is is it's been doing its job there's a lot of crud on there so I'm going to give that a bit of a clean there we are it's quite nice isn't it Everything's got such a lovely way about it. Don't know why. Right, put that back in when that's finished draining, tidy everything up, and then we'll get to swapping some bits. Last pieces of the puzzle then. I think I've got a couple of spark plugs lying around somewhere, so let's try and find those. Here we go. Couple of champion champions. This is brilliant. If you've watched the first videos on this, God, it's a little bit rusty, but yeah, new rotor arm, super exciting. A point set. did this last time. The guy from the Panard Owners Club sent me a image of the tool that you'd need to make to take these spark plugs in and out easier. So that's very kind of him. He's given me a lot of good information from the Panard Owners Club. I was few of you saying you should contact them and I have made contact. I'm in contact with the Panard Owners Club. Very helpful people giving me a lot of information on what uh, what parts I'm going to need, you know. And yeah, a lot of you are saying there's parts in France as well, and um, that might be the case, but it's kind of like uh, it's dead far away. I don't speak French. But we'll do what we can, you know, to get this thing on the road. These old spark plugs definitely passed their best. I'm surprised we managed to get it to run, to be honest. These ones, much nicer. 
tiny little gap though. Whatever. Come pre-gapped, so if it's right, it's right. Now, before I forget, let's dump a load of this down its neck. This is Mineral 2050, which I've read off there is the oil to put in it. And it just so happens to be the only classic car oil that I have lying around. Incredible. What are the, what are the chances? Probably because there's only one type of classic car oil. And apparently it's only, this thing only takes like two litres or something. So I don't even know if I'm going to have enough here. Uh, let's have a look inside here. Very delicate with this. It's the only one we've got. going to give that a little shine up but that is the same which is great news lovely stuff so that can go back in and the points I mean they look really good the points so I don't know if I want to it's the old saying isn't it? if it ain't broke don't fix it but we've got a good spark out of them See the little contact bit on the contact set, a bit worn but not too rusty or anything so that's pretty good but we'll put this new one in now. But we'll test it when we've got a battery hook up and we can gap it properly with some feeler gauges or an old business card. What a lovely little fixing that was there, dead nice. Why, why don't you want to just slide out, what's your problem? Are you tightened in? Feel this bolt? They don't just slot in like some, I think they're tightened on this thing here, which looks like if I go anywhere near it with anything, it's definitely going to snap. Drink. Better close this lid just in case I drop any uh, nuts and bolts into the engine. Done that before. Oh. Okay. Okay, we're coming to the party. Nice, nice, nice. They're moving. The three. Good job I found my ten mil spanner, isn't it? Oh, they're moving. She wants to live. And now we can get these out. <laughs> Which is a pretty good job because it's pretty dusty and rough in there so I do think changing these is going to be good, going to be a good thing. See, not the worst condition, but while we have access to a new set, we might as well use it, you know, give this thing every chance to get going again. So 
such a nice little fixing for that there, I love that. It's just like a little spring clip thing. Really cool. Nice working on everything when it's relatively clean as well. That's how they put that in the spares box because it still works and those actually. Just in case you never know. Cooking on gas. That's ready to go back on. We need a fuel pipe, we need a battery. Should we do battery first? Let's do the battery. Right then, so we've got this thing here. Uh, that goes in like that, and I think there's a cutout at the back there for my... I guess it can sit like that, couldn't it? On the battery tray, anyway. Yeah, let's do that. He's doing one up. Yeah. And he wants yeah. to buy a weather on a manifold. Yeah. He yeah, yeah. Going to go and he's got a somewhere. Oh, in Petford, in Petford, in Petford, in Petford, in Petford, in Castle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, my mate tells me this bloke's got the full range. All it had was the fucking ring plate. Ring plate, so, and that's all he wanted. Because of course, you can reach out, can you do? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is broom, isn't it? It's, it's not, you know, it's just, it's none of it's real. No. Oh no. It's all because Mini Sport will sell you a full shell. Yeah. Brand new. Yeah. So what's left of the car? Just the bin plate? Yes. That's it, yeah. Oh. Another one, that's uh, Telford. That's one of what's about that, the top one of the is one. Telford. One of Dickie's mates that was then. <laughs> um, when they get talking, they get talking. And while they were talking, Batteries in, hooked up. Um, I found a couple of nice one-piece leads this time, instead of having two leads connected to each other, which we did last time. Um, everything else is on. Just need to make sure it's all sparking and stuff. Get a fuel pipe on there into a fuel can. Could be on the verge of starting this thing. Let's get these points set. So, uh, have I got a... Just doing this now, so this little piece is... Oh, well, it's going to be at its highest. There. Get my little feeler gauge. Make sure that is nice and tight all together. Make sure everything's still seated all nice. Difficult to do on this because of how it's designed. Pull that out of there. And then Just try that. Uh, can I see it from there? I don't know if I can. Let's try it with the all the plumbing in and see if we get a nice spark where it's supposed to be. Bye, right, Reg. Get the full. Hey, oh, get the full. Actually, I'll lose it. <laughs> Um, what am I doing? Uh, yeah, that was it. 
trying to see if there's a spark on this. No concrete again this week. Don't mind, turn your <laughs> Has he said anything to you about the concrete? He said you were going, going to do it. When? It doesn't matter. Oh well. Keep holding out hope. Beautiful spark. It'll work. Right, let's get that wedged in there. This one doesn't quite feel right over here because of the ridiculous design. Um, but yeah, bit of fuel, bit more oil. She should, she should get up. I have just looked around the place though. So I haven't got any more 2050 lying around and I don't want to start it without making sure the oil level's perfect because some people from the Panard world say the oil's got to be on these engines otherwise they'll just explode. So I'm going to go to town, get some more oil, wheels, tyres, new tyres, hopefully that'll be that exciting. And when I come back we'll fit the wheels and we'll see if she runs. <sighs> but it should do because that was an amazing spark we just got then. That didn't take long at all did it? Well, for you anyway, it was probably like a second or so, but for me, that was about two hours. Bit of a ball ache. Like. Check these tyres out though. Look at these badges here. Look at that, it's brand new, it's still got the nobles on it. That is insane, so, so good. Chester tyres, I've said it again, they're just the boys, look at that, so good. 35 quid each fantastic so i'm going to get those back on the car first because it's at a bit of a jaunty angle at the moment so we'll get those back on super happy we've got four road legal good tires excellent stuff and i've just topped the oil up so we're all good there uh, right wheels on and then we'll see if we can make a sing this is a bit of petrol pipe i have identified where the old fuel metal hard line comes from the tank. I'm not going to do anything with that yet because we're going to have to rip it all out for welding and stuff. So we're just going to run it off a good old tank under the bonnet, but that fits. So we'll get a little connection on that. opting to use one of these. Why, you may be asking? Uh, cheaper than Jubilee clips? So slide that over there. Get your special pliers for doing this. One side. And the other. Lovely. Very quick as well to use them. So where's that fuel panel? Here we are. Just really excited to hear this thing go again. That'd be so cool, wouldn't it? I'm gonna fill up my little fuel feed bottle. Just careful. Whoops, just move that off there. Careful. I appreciate I'm probably going to have to run this thing with a bit of additive in it because of its age, but this is going to be enough to get it running, you know. And idling, because we're not going to do lots of running, are we? You have a little drink of that. Just pop that in there. I was interested to see if this carburetor leaks, you know, the float chamber on it or whatever it's got, um, and it's leaking already. <laughs> so I am going to have to do a rebuild on that. Great, so I'll get the uh, details of the carburetor down before I go today and I'll order a kit for it. But yeah, it's leaking already just from that little, little pore there. So let's get a cloth underneath it. 
just our luck, eh? But it's all right, we should still be able to see if she, if she sings. Are you ready? catch that before it falls off there. I can see the fuel being set up through the hose already to clean the hose. She sounds amazing. She sounds, I mean, it's a two cylinder flying machine, so it's gonna sound, you know, a bit ropey, but that, that, that was brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant. Oh, so good, so, so good. Will it go again?
see that down there, that's where we were messing about with it before, so that's fine. This one probably just needs a different up or a new seal. So the fuel going through there, not the best, but it is going through. A lot of air in it. So maybe it might need a fuel pump, so I'll have a look for one of those. This side's really good, no signs of any leak in here. You can see there, it's a bit moist. Bum 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 How cool! How cool! You know, no sort of major smoke or anything. It's all fine. It's alive! <laughs> There's a couple of little backfires and I'm wondering if it's because of all this air that's coming through with the fuel. I don't think it's coming through enough, so it might be leaning it out and making it backfire. So I am going to have to look. You can see the air bubbles there, I hope. I'm going to have to look into another fuel pump for it. Fuel pump and car build kit, but everything else looks amazing. I'd like to see if we've got the alternator charging as well, so I'll do that now. She's alive, folks. She's alive. I can hear myself again. Ah, oh, so pleased. Sounds amazing. Backfiring a little bit, but that could be numerous things. The fuel's not getting through as quickly as I'd like. There's no exhaust. There's not going to be any back pressure. Oh, and there's no air filter on there. So I don't think it's anything else than that, really. I can't imagine stuff like the timing would be out or anything. I, I know there's quite a procedure to time this thing up so I'm going to have to do a little bit of research because it's probably worth checking but I don't think it's that I think it's just a mixture of uh, a few different things we'll probably solve it when we change the fuel pump but that was brilliant that was absolutely brilliant I can see the carburetor leaking onto the hot exhaust there which is fun isn't it stand by with a fire extinguisher <laughs> Ah, oh, she will live again. So pleased with that. Will it fire up again now, just off the key? She fires up with the key with a bit of a coax from the throttle, which is to be expected. 
I'm just intrigued now that it's been running for a little bit for what this uh, what colour the oil is going to be and I mean look at that it's clear you can see it there it's not rancid it's not black it sounds good the engine sounds like a good engine considering it was seized as well but I think that was a valve related thing worried about how much that is leaking though so we'll just pop that there for a second Fantastic news though, um, and that draws us to a close for this episode. And you know, we've made a lot of progress there. We've now got an engine that starts on the key, screwdriver. We've got a full set of tyres, excellent tyres. We're all tidied up and wired in. Next episode, we've got to do brakes. We have to get the brakes done. We have to sort this pedal situation out. We have to make the throttle pedal work loads of stuff like that so it's going to be a big episode sorting all that out I think and I don't know when that's going to happen because I've got to order a load of bits and they're going to take ages to get in no doubt but this has been good that that bit there is sorted half the battle so pleased thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed it do the whole you know this bit subscribe like whatever you want to do um, tell me what you think of it and remember the start of the episode if we can all get together at some classic car show somewhere that would be so cool just having a chat and you can have a look around it and you can be like why have you done this why have you done that what the fuck is that there are you mad great stuff right see you soon bye